In this episode, Jensen Huan announced the beginning of a new era where robots make robots for robots. And obviously, Nvidia is ready to take AI to the next level. Naver Labs, meanwhile, revealed the world's most robotic building, and China's car giants struck a deal with Ubitech to have their robots work in factories. Plus, Starship's successful launch, Dark Side of the Moon loses a few pounds, and a Japanese company is preparing to build a space elevator. This and other tech news for this week is coming in hot. Let's get it. Naver Labs showed off its largest robotics test bed in the world, the Naver 1784 building. It has the most unique Starbucks coffee shop in the world on the second floor with all of the orders delivered by robots called Rookie that move freely throughout the building. In total, Naver 1784 employs 100 robots, including a two-armed bot called Ambidex, which engineers are conducting various experiments with in an attempt to make it useful. The robot couriers, meanwhile, are connected to a cloud system, building infrastructure, and even digital twins via a private 5G network. The building also sports the world's first RoboPort elevator. Imagine your office building getting a do-over by Naver Labs. What would be the biggest challenge to get that done? Let us know in the comments. And Donfeng Liju Motor, a subsidiary of Chinese car maker Donfeng Motor Corporation, has signed an agreement to procure Ubitech's Walker S humanoid robots. The droids will obviously work in the auto industry, but whether this is a pilot or an already implemented project remains unknown, just like the total number of humanoids that will clock in. Just one is like a million bucks. According to Ubitech representatives, robots will check seat belts, door locks, headlight covers, frame quality, compartments, as well as perform final interior inspections, fluid refueling, front axle assembly, logo and label printing. At the same time, no special tools or conditions will apparently be made for the robots. They'll just roll them out onto the workshop floor and off they go. Remember, this Walker S is a new generation of robots of the Walker series, which were originally marketed as home helpers. This new bad boy is equipped with 41 servo drives with force feedback as well as built-in high-res RGBD visual sensors that allow it to observe its environment, create semantic 3D maps, and design walking routes while avoiding obstacles. BMW and Mercedes have been awfully quiet about their robotic endeavors, while well, now it seems like the ball is in their court. Your move, guys! And Chinese company Robot Era, which just recently showed how its robot pats a cat and peels cucumbers, has sent its humanoid robot on a stroll of the Great Wall of China. The X-Bot L robot did quite well on the non-ideal road surface, traversing stairs and even attempting a few Tai Chi moves. Quote, Perceptive RL algorithms help enhance the robot's ability to perceive and make decisions on unfamiliar terrain, end quote. The developers also say that the robot remains functional even in low-light environments, which apparently is a headache for quite a few of their competitors. Never mind that, I'm more curious to know what time they actually got up to walk the wall alone. Remember Justin? The research lab of the Technical University of Munich and the Institute of Robotics and Mechatronics at DLR have recently demonstrated that their robot has gotten much better at handling objects. Justin has been in development for about 20 years, but only now, as the engineers themselves admit, thanks to the development of AI systems for robots, it has become really flexible, dexterous, and useful. Is the era of robots really afoot? Check out this next story. Jensen Huan, NVIDIA CEO, made quite an entrance at the Computex Tech Conference in Taipei, where he presented his rundown on artificial intelligence and robots. First, the company plans to introduce new artificial intelligence gas pedals every year to build a brighter future with robot factories producing robots faster. For example, the new Rubin GPU scheduled for release in 2026 should revolutionize the AI industry. 
According to Juan, soon, quote, almost every interaction with the internet or a computer is likely to be accompanied by generative AI working somewhere in the cloud, end quote. NVIDIA's CEO is also confident that in the near future, the development of artificial intelligence will reach a new stage by transitioning from chatbots such as GPT to physical AI such as autonomous driving systems and humanoid robots. Back in April, NVIDIA announced several new robotics-related technologies. They are Project Groot, Jetson Thor, Isaac Lab, Osmo, Isaac Manipulator, and Isaac Perceptor. Groot is a multimodal artificial intelligence designed for humanoid robots. Groot-based robots will be able to understand natural language and mimic movements by observing human actions, quickly learn coordination, dexterity, and other skills to flawlessly adapt and interact with the real world. This AI has already been implemented in robots from Agility Robotics, Aptronic, Fourier Intelligence, and Unitree Robotics. Isaac Manipulator offers models designed for specialized robotic arms, while Isaac Perceptor provides advanced vision capabilities using 3D cameras. The company also supplies digital twin solutions, which companies can utilize to reconfigure their manufacturing facilities to accommodate robots more quickly and efficiently. Quote, everything will be roboticized. All factories will be roboticized. Factories will be run by robots. End quote. And in these factories run by artificial intelligence, robots will create other robots. This sounds like Skynet is literally around the corner. What do you guys think? Meanwhile, the US plans to make NVIDIA, Microsoft, and OpenAI jump through antitrust hoops. Authorities are concerned that the three giants are clearly dominating a vital industry that is AI. The DOJ will now take the lead in investigating NVIDIA and the company's possible antitrust violations. The fact is that industry players are alarmed by NVIDIA's dominance and related problems. The company makes partners dependent on its software and non-transparently distributes AI gas pedals among customers. At the same time, the Federal Trade Commission will check OpenAI and Microsoft, which now owns 49% of the leading AI company. Moreover, it's interested in both violations of user privacy when training ChatGPT and the mechanics of the partnership between Microsoft and OpenAI. Is this just for show and the tech giants will get away with it as always, or can regulation really affect this seemingly unavoidable leap into AI nirvana? What do you guys think? On to space now, first time in history, Starship soft landed both stages. Yay! Everything went swivelingly, even though one of the 33 engines of the first stage failed to activate at launch, and one of the flaps got its heat shield burned off during descent, which then collapsed the wing. Still, the ship and the booster made a soft landing on water, the former in the Indian Ocean, while the latter in the Gulf of Mexico. Success? No doubt, although it was overshadowed by some sour grapes. So this Japanese billionaire, Yusaku Mizawa, announced the Dear Moon mission canceled in which he and eight other artists were to make a Starship flight around the moon. The official reason for the cancellation was delays, which supposedly are in the way of Mizawa's and his team's plans for the future. Coincidentally, the team itself immediately took to X that it was actually ready to wait as long as needed. And then the media linked the billionaire's refusal to participate in the project to his fortune dwindling by at least a half, from three to one and a half billion dollars. Plus, Mizawa already flew a Soyuz rocket to the International Space Station, and there was probably some tension with Musk, who unfollowed Mizawa on X about a half a year ago. So does this mean Mizawa piggybacked Elon for nothing? More on space, man, Japan. Obayashi from Japan recently reminded us that they still intend to build a space elevator that could be used to get to orbit without a rocket. To get to the nitty gritty of this project, check out our previous video in the description below. But the short and long of it is that the elevators are supposed to get over the hurdle of price for getting people and cargo to orbit. After all, rockets are really expensive. Even one of the cheapest options, Falcon 9 from SpaceX, charges 2700 bucks for two pounds or a kilo of cargo. But to connect Earth and the orbital station with a super strong cable would be expensive only in the beginning. But then, in theory, transportation will become streamlined and cheaper. The only problem is, there's no material for such a cable as of yet. 
Nevertheless, Obayashi, one of the five largest construction companies in Japan, which built Tokyo Skytree, the world's tallest TV tower, does not intend to give up on its goal. Moreover, it's reported that the practical realization of the project should begin already next year, and the start of the operation of the rocket-free launch system is scheduled for 2050. These mega projects are getting out of hand or what? Meanwhile, Chang'e 6, a Chinese module, is on its way back to Earth right now and it's bringing soil from the dark side of the moon. It should arrive on June 25th. The soil was collected by drilling and then using a robotic arm. The main part of the operation was automatic, but key stages were controlled by commands from Earth and transmitted to the robot using the satellite Kuikiao 2. The module collected a total of 4 pounds or 2 kilos of soil and rocks. Do you think they actually got it, or are they planning to pull a NASA on the world where they say that they got it and never share it with anybody? Let us know. And finally, air cabs are becoming a reality. Following China, the US, too, has taken on passenger transportation in electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Now, Archer Aviation, a California-based company, has received Part 135 certification from the US Federal Aviation Administration. It allows commercial flights on the midnight air cab designed for four passengers and a pilot. The maximum range of the vehicle is 100 miles or 160 kilometers, and its maximum speed is 150 miles per hour or 241 kilometers per hour. Are California helicopter companies going to go out of business? Let's wait and see. There's more, but we're out of time, so subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram, and if you want to work with us or our partners, then check out our LinkedIn page. All links can be found in the description below. Until next time, folks, when we bring you the latest from the world of high tech.